Welcome everybody it's Luke. to this uh, full meeting. This is the last panel it ends at 710. Louder. Right. I'll do my I'll best. <laughs> I'm Alan Freeman. I am with Radhika Desai, co-editor yes. of the Future of See World Capitalism book series. Bye -bye. We have four books in this series so far, and you have all four authors. That's true. You have the authors of all, representative authors of all four books, but one of them, which is two author books, Robert Chernema and Ian Hudson. Ian Hudson cannot be with us. But we have Henry Heller from the University of Manitoba, who is the author of The Birth of Capitalism. So we have Costas Panayotakis. Currently, I've forgotten your current affiliation. New York City College of Technology. New York City. New York City College of Technology. College of Technology. I'm sorry about that. Who wrote Remaking Scarcity? We have Robert Chernoff, Chernoff as one of the two authors of To Live and Die in America. Radhika Desai, the author of The Economy. Can I see the cover there again? You want to see the cover for that? There you go, thank you. It's a very familiar picture. This is this is taken from the front of the dollar bill. I know. The back of the dollar bill. And it says New World Order in Latin. Sanctioned by God. Um, I'm going to, the purpose of this session is, this is a first venture for us, we're hoping to make this a regular feature of the Left Forum, and the idea is because this is a unique book project, we want to facilitate <coughs> every year, we'll come back and we'll look at world capitalism and we'll discuss how is it doing with the current authors. And so the brief that we've given our authors is to say, what is it about their book that they would like to discuss with you in order that we can mutually increase our understanding of the current state of the world and the wider sense of world capitalism. I'm going to say one minute's worth of words about our book series, which is kind of intended to persuade you to buy them, sell them, and do all that stuff. But that really, the reason for that is because these authors have put in an enormous amount of their time in developing something. And I don't think it's appreciated the extent to which people who write actually give of free labor time. If we're thinking about a future world or a future economy in which you might have people contributing what they feel like contributing, people using what they need to use, which is constructed on the basis of something other than just what you're told to do or what you can afford to do, I think you might begin with writing and reading. You might also include music and art and a few other things, but they would be fairly high up the list. Now we've got more people looking in, and I just want to get there any... You can get shares. Yeah, please. Well, well, well. There's actually one There's one here. We, we said two aims with this book series, apart from trying to increase understanding of world capitalism where it's at, one of them to produce books which are what we call accessible. And accessible means two things for us. We try to sell them at a price that an ordinary person on the street can afford. Now, we are aware that ideally the price should be much lower. We've just been in Mexico, and we were told don't even think about selling a book for more than $10 if you want a student to read it. We're not there yet, we'd like to be. It's certainly a lot lower than what you'd get from a university publisher, where the minimum price you'd find is $100, $150. It's a library market, and that means ordinary people who don't get it. The second sense, in which we use the word accessible, is we try to make it readable. Now, readable can mean two things. One of them, which we don't mean, is dumbed down. These are not comic books. These are not history in five minute books. They're serious books. The 
standard we've set is that if we wanted a critical, um, radical thinking professor to be able to stand up and recommend that book in a class, that that professor would be able to defend that book against her or his right-wing colleagues or administration who says you can't teach that. Because the argument would stand up. So they're not dumbed down, but we do believe that books can be well written. We believe there, are there is such a thing as a badly written book, believe it or not, and there's such a thing as a well written a book, and a well written book is a book that has an argument that you can understand, that is based on evidence, so you can check for yourself, and that engages in what we call critical thinking. Critical thinking, I'll define it like this. If a book is critical, it will first of all examine all the contrary views that need to be taken into account. But second, it will look at everything that might be wrong with the argument that is being advanced. And third, it will couch the argument in such a way that you, the reader, can decide for yourself. It's not an instruction, these are not instruction books. These are books the purpose of which is to get a debate and a discussion and get thought going. And so how can you help us? Well, not just selling and buying them, but contributing to that discussion. And maybe even writing for us, certainly reading, corresponding with the authors, contributing in all the many ways that readers help authors to believe that it's worth dedicating that time to what they do. And also improving what they do by telling them what's wrong or what you don't like or what can be done better. So when we get to the discussion, we hope we'll come in not just with question this, question that, but what can we do as editors of this series that might make our aims better achieved?